Welcome to Felicity Was Here, where three super fans of the underappreciated 90s gem Felicity rewatch every episode and discuss one young woman's journey of self discovery in New York City. So put on your coziest cable knit sweater, grab a cup of Dina DeLuca coffee, and join us in watching the trials and tribulations of one Felicity Porter. Welcome back to Felicity Was Here. I'm Heather. I'm Melissa. And I'm Dr. Joe. And today we are discussing Felicity Season 1, Episode 3, Hot Objects. This week, it's Felicity's first college party, and she tries to work up the courage to ask Ben. Julie asks Noel's advice on her budding romance with Ben, while Ben gets stuck in an acting class. Hey, ladies, are you ready for our first ever college party? Oh, yeah. I don't have anything to wear. <laughs> Go to Bloomingdale's like Felicity did. <laughs> okay, <laughs> noted. Big brown bag. The big brown bag. She, did, she didn't go for the little one. She went for the big one. <laughs> Well, we are moving along in the season. We've got some new characters this episode, which I'm really excited about. Sally's back too, so a lot happened. Just to mm-hmm. kind of recap what happened last week, Felicity's parents made one last attempt to get Felicity to come back to California, but Felicity stood her ground and explained that she followed Ben to University of New York, but ultimately she's staying for herself. And her parents finally left New York on good terms and offering to pay her tuition, which is really nice but she's still got to work and pay for her uh, room and board. And Ben is still pursuing Julie, but she's avoiding him. And we also found out that Julie was adopted and her birth mom lives in New York City, which is why she came to New York. And then Noel and Felicity worked through the awkwardness after he confessed his feelings for her and he helped her work things out with her parents as well. So that's what we that's what we covered last week. In this episode, per usual, we open with Felicity's usual narration on her tape to Sally. And she mentions that tonight is her first official college party ever and they make (laughs) they make this seem like a bigger deal in the show I feel like that it is in real life but I don't know do you do either of you remember Mm -hmm. your first college party I vaguely remember it it was in the basement of a frat house and (laughs) the floor was really really (laughs) sticky I remember that (laughs) and I remember just drinking like a beer and then maybe like a jungle juice out of someone's (laughs) cooler I don't remember much else other than just being like this is it (laughs) It wasn't that exciting. What about you, Dr. Joe? Do you remember? I didn't. I don't think I went to any parties. Like, I really was... I was kind of a Felicity in that sense, I guess. I was not a big party animal. I I do know we had some events at our dorm, which coincidentally enough, we did have an organized dorm party. Different floors had different types of music or different themes. It was like, I think it was something like a 12 floor dorm or maybe higher. I don't know. But we had different types of music and it was just kind of like an open house type of thing where you could go to different floors and hang out with different people. So that's that's the first party I remember if we're going to count that. I don't really remember my first official party our dorm also hosted a lot of events just in that first week they call welcome week so it's like every couple of Mm. hours they've got something going on it's like ice cream social or a pizza party or whatever our our dorm didn't host this kind of a party that's for sure and then i don't remember yeah what my first official party was whether it was like a house party or in a frat or something i don't know they all run together now But Felicity and Julie are very excited. So Felicity's telling Sally about her first official college party. And we cut to Noel, who is holding a dorm floor meeting where he's going through all the details of organizing the party. And he's kind of asking the different kids from the floor if they know, like there's one kid that really wants a band. And Noel's asking other folks if (laughs) anyone has access to a good sound system. And we see a resident who we've never met before, Sensa, who's played by Ivana Milicevic. She offers to take care of the whole party with the help of her cousins who would <laughs> literally kill for her. And she's like, look, you'll... <laughs> I like Noel's line there. Hold on. <laughs> Noel's like, I just want a party. <laughs> she's like, no, they'll take care of it. <laughs> I like how stunned he was that she would actually say like they'd kill for her. And he's just like, I, I'm just asking for a party. I don't need anybody to kill anybody. <laughs> yeah. And, and uh, Sensa and her family are definitely um, extra. So Sensa's like, no, look, you'll meet Yuri. He'll take care of everything that you need. She's got a beeper. She's like going back and forth, probably with her cousins again. <laughs> it's very Russian mafia at this point. You're like something here is weird with Sensa. <laughs> but she's like, look, no, I'll take you. We'll get you everything you need for this party. So then we hop over to Felicity and Julie hanging out in the dorm and Julie just exclaims that like 
oh my god at last year's dorm party three people showed up naked like ah how scandalous <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be a crazy dorm party yeah doesn't sound like any of the dorm events you guys had <laughs> Yeah, I was like, that's really extreme. That's, I mean, I, I get that it's a TV show, but really, <laughs> like, I feel like if that did happen, they would be banned from having a party the following yeah. year. Like, you all went too wild, so, like, you lost you the know, privilege. We're shutting yeah. that down. You can't have a party again. That's nuts. And also just, but good but, for them. and also just that they think, like, that's the craziest thing <laughs> yeah. that what could ever happen is, like, people came naked. Oh, my God. <laughs> that's silly stuff. So they're chatting about the party and Felicity mentions in passing to Julie, she's like, hey, I went by your room last night and you weren't there where, you know, what, what's up? And Julie claims that she went to Lucky Strike with this girl, Astrid. Okay. Yeah, it was not even a thing. It was just <laughs> some random girl named Astrid. The way she yeah. talks about it, it's like, did you even want to be there with her? Like, who is this Astrid? Sounds like a <laughs> fake name made up of her thing. 100%. <laughs> so then Felicity proceeds to make sure that Julie is okay if she were to invite Ben to the party on Friday. And of course, Julie's fine with it. Yeah, there's, I mean, me and Ben are nothing it was a passing fad and she basically said me and ben we were like a 24-hour virus and it's over that's quite reassuring <laughs> yeah <laughs> also a weird analogy like we were a virus i don't know that's very yeah. negative <laughs> like you went on a date it's, it's okay <laughs> a little, a little dramatic julie <laughs> and so then they continue to talk about how big of a deal their first college party is that they're going to look back on it years from now and remember it i'm here to say you probably won't but that's okay maybe they'll remember it. well Fel yeah, felicity <laughs> probably will remember this one yeah. based on what happens later <laughs> but yeah true, from that true. we get that felicity is gonna try and invite ben from the previous episodes i got the feeling she still thinks like hey we're just gonna be friends but i don't know now it sounds like she might be asking him on a on a date or like to come with her to this party what do you guys think i think there's always a little pebble of hope in the back of her mind just like this little tiny nugget that says well maybe yeah. maybe friendship could lead to something more so yeah maybe know. she thinks the more time he spends with me maybe he'll see how awesome i am and then she makes this awesome. super cringy comments to sally practicing how she's going to invite him to the party <laughs> Oh man, it made me cringe. She describes how she's gonna see him at the party. They're gonna walk over to each other, talk about the class they're in, and then they're just gonna start dancing for hours and hours. <laughs> but before that, she's like, oh, he likes how I look. I, how, I like how he looks. We basically <laughs> appreciate how each other looks. <laughs> I just, she made me laugh so hard. We both appreciate how the other one looks. I like that appreciate. <laughs> so she thinks they're going to be dancing for hours and get all sweaty and tired. And so she's going to suggest, you want to go to my room? And then she practices saying it in a more sultry voice, which made me cringe harder. You want to go to my room? <laughs> Again, I'm not getting friendship vibes here. <laughs> No, not in the sultry Poor way she's asking him. You know? <laughs> I know. But I like how she says, like, her roommate's not going to be there, so they just sit on their bed and talk about everything. <laughs> There's no other sexiness happening. They're just going to talk for hours. She says it in such a sultry voice, like, you want to go to my room and talk? about everything. <laughs> <laughs> but unfortunately, despite that whole scenario that she explains to Sally, she says that she blew her first opportunity to ask him. Um, so then we cut over to a scene where Felicity and Ben are both looking at some papers posted on a wall, which I'm guessing are like class schedules or something. And mm -hmm. Ben is upset because they put him in drama class and he's not in drama. And, you know, Felicity's talking about the fact that she's happy. She got the classes she wanted. She got inorganic chemistry which she's super excited about because the professor, Dr. William Garibay, actually like wrote the textbooks that she studied in high school. And so she's finally going to get to meet him and, and learn from him directly. So she's super excited about that. But then Ben changes the topic and's like, oh, hey, bummer. You, you know, bummer you couldn't come to Lucky Strike last night. There was this whole thing like, you know, you should definitely try and come next time. But then Felicity says to Sally as she's recapping this conversation, she's like, oh, my God, I'm so dumb. That was my chance. I should have just said, yeah, for sure. Next time, like Friday when we're having this party. But my thought went to, did she just, did it go over her head entirely that he said lucky strike where Julie was supposedly with Astrid or did she just like conveniently not mention that to Sally? I thought that was very odd. Yeah. Yeah. I thought she was going to have like this completely jaw dropped face when she heard that and then be upset because of what Julie said, but I don't know. Yeah. I 
I think she was so fixated on this mm. idea of the college party that it kind of overshadowed, hey, your friend's kind of maybe going behind your back and this guy you're into is probably not into you. I think I think she just got tunnel vision on that college party and what that means to her, what that represents. Or maybe the, yeah, the Astrid comment also wasn't notable enough for her to like deposit it in her memory files and maybe she forgot that that's <laughs> yeah. where Julie was too. But I, yeah, if I were talking to my friend Sally, I'd be like, you'll never believe this. Julie lied to me and was also at Lucky Strike. <laughs> or I guess maybe she didn't lie, but she omitted that Ben was there. But that's also bad. Totally bad. Yeah, that was really sad to see. And then poor, again, poor Felicity, she, like Ben just wants to be friends with you. And she's just so dead set on inviting him to this party and obsessing over it. Ugh. So now we move on to the cafeteria where Julie is talking to another strange resident who's talking about the sexiness of the alphabet and how the letters should be in a different order. Was that Astrid? Maybe that's Astrid. Oh, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I'll look it up. Hold on. <laughs> it could be. I think an Astrid would talk about the orders of the yeah. of the letters of the alphabet. But Ben comes and sits down next to Julie. He's like, hey, I don't want to bother you and you don't have to return my calls, which obviously means she's still avoiding him, but yet also going to Lucky Strike with him. So again, not really sure what's going on here. But he invites her to go see a band on Friday. But of course, the party at Kelvin Hall is on Friday, so she can't go. And Ben just puts it all out there. He's like, you're never going to go out with me again, are you? And Julie does the opposite of being up front and just says, I got to go. <laughs> and she just picks up and leaves the conversation. <laughs> I got to tell you something. It was That's Astrid. It was, it was her. No. <laughs> That's so cool. I never thought I never made that connection before. Oh my gosh. <laughs> my mind I just was blown. She so odd. I was like, this could be an Astrid. So I guess Nailed she's it. not no. made up. But I don't see yeah. her going to Lucky Strike with her. <laughs> no. But that kind of makes sense that she got, um, she was talking to her about random stuff throughout the episode. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe that lackluster review of like, oh, it wasn't a big deal that Julie gave. Maybe it really wasn't <laughs> because she was with Astrid. I don't know. That's true. So you think maybe like Julie was there but didn't talk to Ben at all? Oh, hell no. <laughs> she absolutely did talk to mm -hmm. Ben. No, Ben does not occupy a room and not get noticed. That's, That's no. True. Obviously, she noticed him. And obviously, they had words and, and conversed. No, no way. I'm just saying she probably did go there. Maybe it was a group thing. And Astrid was there. So that's not a lie. But it's also not the whole yeah. truth. Yeah. She's just omitting. That's what I was thinking. But it's weird because then she's Absolutely. dodging his calls and doesn't talk to him when he does sit down next to her. So it's just, yeah, I feel like it's mixed messages for sure for Ben. <laughs> well, that's what they're experts at in, in Felicity on the show. Lots of mixed messages. Happen. That and the, and the very so, weighted. We'll see. We'll hey. see. <laughs> Yeah, that one too. <laughs> so once we leave Ben and Julie, we get a very beautiful slow-mo shot of Felicity heading to her class with Dr. Garibay for the first time. And she's telling Sally that she's so happy that she's stuck with pre-med. So we found out like she hasn't really pursued art yet. So she's still pre-med and that this class is sort of the start of her life as a doctor. Um, so she goes up to Dr. Garibay as everyone's kind of filtering into the class, into their seats, and he's reading a paper a newspaper and just looks very disinterested about being there about teaching about kids all, all of it he's a very cranky looking mm -hmm. old man and she goes up to him and says oh i couldn't find the book anywhere do you think i'll still be able to follow along in class if i don't have the book and garibay puts on his newspaper and says no <laughs> i call it required reading because it's required it's not optional she's like well i just it was sold out everywhere i don't know what to do and he turns to the rest of the class and says who else had trouble finding the book and of course no one raised their hands <laughs> so felicity's the only one who couldn't find it and it was just a very sad moment for her since she kind of idolizes this guy for him to be so rude to her in the beginning and i also feel like we all kind of had a professor like this at some point who just has like a big ego and he just wants to be an ass just because I had a different take, oh. <laughs> which I'm sure you're surprised by. <laughs> um, Lay it on us. I think, well, so I had I had a similar experience, but it was it was in grad school, not undergrad. And I was chatting with a friend in the elevator, and 
it was something like we had to read six chapters before the first class and i think i only read maybe the first four and i was telling her like oh my gosh i hope i hope it's not really obvious you know i hope we don't cover all the chapters really because it's going to be really obvious i didn't read all of them i was like freaking out which is not my style i usually don't get anxious about those things but anyway i was going on about it and then i look over and there's this older guy in the elevator with us and he's just like see you in class and i was like oh shit it was the professor it was it was the <laughs> professor and i was like oh frick so then i started like kind of going on like i was cat sitting there were little kittens crawling all over me because that's what happened i'm like they were crawling inside my book i couldn't turn the pages there was i just was covered in kittens they were treating me like i was a cat tree and i just went on and on so i did have my moments i guess back in the day but that happened but I'm saying all that to say I would absolutely not go up to the professor on day one and be like hi I don't have my book yeah. and I didn't read like don't don't lead with that don't I think that's on her a little bit I you know it's like we can say like we've all had that you know dickhead professor but he's probably there's probably professors out there who say we've all had that student like <laughs> who announces this ridiculousness mm -hmm. you know I didn't volunteer that information to my professor on purpose that was an accident that was completely silly. And if I was in that classroom and I also didn't have my book, you are damn sure I would not yeah. raise my hand too. So I don't know that every single person got the book. I think people just aren't stupid enough to yeah. admit it on day one. That's what I was like, going to say. Hi, I'm unprepared. <laughs> if I didn't have I the book, do I would just keep my mouth shut and like try and look at someone else's next. Find a little buddy, <laughs> yeah. make a little friend, figure yeah. it out, sort it out on your own. Like, why are you going up to teacher? Like, come on. Yeah. I also feel that like was, I this is kind of a Hollywood example exaggeration of the first like, like I don't think I've ever had homework assigned to me before the first class where like I had to have already no. read five chapters before starting yeah not an undergrad so that's why I felt like he was a little unfair like it was the first it seemed like the first class and is she gonna be able to follow along like well you didn't have any reading yet you'll follow along just fine go sit down like <laughs> yeah but i'm not a teacher so yeah you're you're right joe that maybe all the teachers out there are like oh we've all had that kiss ass student who's like oh am i gonna follow along i'm felicity hi you're my favorite <laughs> yeah it was it was a little too much i was like girl you did not play that out very smoothly like there was it was totally unnecessary and i think it was just for obviously for dramatic effect for the show but it, i think it's kind of speaks to her pattern of I don't know, these goof ups, like these social faux pas, like don't do that. And getting a little overly too invested again in the idea of something and what it's supposed to look like and then getting crushed when it doesn't look exactly the way she imagined it. Permanent foot in mouth syndrome. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But you're right, she did. She's like, I idolize this man and she probably has a vision of being mm -hmm. the favorite, getting a straight A in his class and going on to be his TA or something. Yeah, she's probably fantasized some whole scenario for that too. Yeah, a whole future, <laughs> a whole working relationship future for them. Well, Ben's drama class isn't necessarily going any better than Felicity's, but it's much funnier in my opinion. I, I just I, I laugh at all of these drama <laughs> class scenes. Oh my God. <laughs> Melissa, do you want to take this one? <laughs> sure. All right. So I love this because it's like sort of like my art classes that I took in college where there's a lot of pretentious people. So Ben has this drama class and the professor's talking, sitting on top of his desk and, desk and all the students are like just enamored of him and eating up everything he's saying. And of course, Ben, who's not supposed to be there, looks super lost. And so the professor talks about the first assignment they have to do. They have to bring in an object that has meaning to them. It's supposed to kind of reveal like hidden parts of their life. And one of the kids in the class goes, will this be a Meisner exercise? And all the like classmates are like, oh, and then someone <laughs> says, no, hopefully we don't have any repetition in this class. And they all laugh. And Ben, of course, has no idea what's going on. I don't have the hottest Ben moment, but this was like the funniest Ben moment of the whole episode. Mine, like mine is coming up, yeah. Like the way he looks around at everyone, like what is going on? And because <laughs> like he's in the Twilight yeah, Zone. And, I mean, I was not a theater kid or drama or anything, so I'm just as lost as him too. Like hearing the professor talk, and I've just it was such a funny scene. <laughs> love it i love any scene where ben gets to kind of show his silliness or goofiness so this was a good episode mm -hmm. for that um so i have to find this object bring it in and kind of explain what it means to them so ben talks to the professor after class saying that this isn't the class he wanted to sign up for i think he said he was trying to get into russian language was that right which doesn't seem yes, very ben which i'm like, here, that's, but... <laughs> like that's like over all the languages what uh, 
<laughs> that was odd. That's Maybe it's so he can talk to Sensa at the party. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> She's got the connects. So he's saying that the, they made a mistake putting him in drama, and his professor said that drama is a form of communication, so that's maybe why they put him in, in that class instead. So even though Ben's on this wait list to get back into Russian, his drama professor says he still has to do this hot object exercise. He still has to participate. Then we are at lunch in the cafeteria and Felicity goes up to Ben and cuts right to the chase. She's like, so look, we've got a party on Friday at Kelvin. And you know, just super casually, I'm just spreading the word. So again, she's not really coming out and asking him. She's like, oh, I'm just spreading the word. So, you know, if you want to go, it, you know, it's on Friday. And what does Ben do but say, oh yeah, Julie already told me about it. And of course, Felicity's like surprised and confused because she told Julie that she was planning on asking Ben. And then Ben's just like, all right, I got to go. So Felicity, of course, goes to confront Julie as they're checking their mail and is like, what's going on with you and Ben? Julie continues to say that her and Ben are just friends. Well, she's like, you can be whatever you want to be with Ben, but this is about you and me. Like every time we talk, I feel like you're not being honest. I feel like I'm being lied to. And I really just don't want to resent each other. And Julie's like, well, there's nothing to talk about. You really don't have to worry about me and Ben. It's all in the past. I really appreciated Felicity on the scene because she was so direct and not wishy-washy. She just went right to it and got into it and said exactly what she was thinking and feeling. So I really appreciated that because sometimes she's a little less assertive. So I like that. Obviously, I was not a fan of Julie's response. I know Heather's not. <laughs> I'm shaking my head. Not even a little bit. <laughs> well, and I agree. Like Felicity was upfront and she was mature. Yeah. And I like that she made it about their friendship and not about Ben. She was like, this mm -hmm. is about me and you. I feel like you're being, you know, there, we're, I don't want us to resent each other. Like she does want to maintain a friendship there, no matter what's going on with her and Ben, they can do whatever they want, but she just wants her to be upfront about it. Exactly. Exactly. And I, I did really like that too. It's so much more of a mature route than Julie, Julie and her avoidant ass. And we then cut to Noel's room where Julie's sitting on his bed and Noel's playing with a basketball. And I realized after doing this for three episodes now that that might be a Noel quirk. Like he's always kind of playing some with something in his hands, like the snow globes in Felicity's room oh, yeah. and then the basketball. And then later on in the show, it's not a spoiler, but like he does, it has a magic eight ball that he's mm -hmm. playing with. Nice so I'm like, I wonder if that's a thing that like Noel's just always kind of got something in his hands that he's fiddling yeah. around with. Like we'll in have to keep an eye on that. Ocean's Eleven, like Brad Pitt's character is always eating. Like, yeah. I just feel like maybe this is an old thing. But, you know, surprise, surprise, she tells Noel that her and Ben like each other. So Noel's like, what, you and Ben? She's like, I know. Can you believe this? It's like, so you like Ben too? <laughs> Does everybody like Ben? And I, I love, love that part. I felt yeah. that for Noel. I felt that. It was funny. He's like, no, I'm serious though. <laughs> like, I'm really asking you. <laughs> Like, no, for He's real, so funny. Not rhetorical. <laughs> <laughs> that was great. And Julie says, but it's complicated because I think that Ben really likes me, but Felicity's so excited about hanging out with Ben at the party, but I think Ben really wants to hang out with me at the party. And ugh, I don't know. Her tone was very <laughs> full of herself, in my opinion, in this moment. I just... Yeah. And that's just like, so high Yeah, school. we get that he likes you. It's obvious. Yeah. And it's like, yeah. oh, well, she really... Well, he wants to hang out with me and... Well, I don't know. So you had an opportunity. Felicity handed it to her. She yeah. could have really just made this so much easier said yeah you know what i was worried about telling you i don't want to hurt your feelings but yeah we do kind of have feelings or we're into each other so it is what it is just put it out there she just is prolonging this this is just going to be such a slow burn noel says well don't do it like don't hang out with bennett or don't ask him to this party like don't do it if you think that it'll hurt felicity and julie's like oh but i really want to and noel's like Again, why is nobody freaking listening to my advice? <laughs> like everyone comes there to just bounce ideas off of him. He's giving advice and he's like, come on, like everyone, you should start listening to me. <laughs> so Julie's like, well, I think I'm just going to tell Felicity that Ben keeps asking me out. And I was like, don't do that. You're just in this confused state right now. And if you tell Felicity, it'll seem like you're asking for permission to date him, but you don't really want to do that yet. And Julie's like, okay, well, this wasn't helpful. <laughs> 
because she's still confused and doesn't know what to do. But then, yeah. of course, more lies. She asks Noel to not tell Felicity about this because if Felicity found out that Julie told Noel that she likes Ben, then, you know, dot, 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 she'll be pissed. But Noel's like, it's okay. I already knew. <laughs> Poor Noel. <laughs> he's, he's firmly in the friend zone at the moment. <laughs> So yeah, I didn't I didn't feel great about Julie's conversation there. And I didn't like Noel's advice either, yeah. honestly, to just be like, well, don't tell her, yeah. don't don't make it seem like this. No, the reason why you're even having this internal battle is because you didn't tell her the last time you saw her. So yeah, continue to not tell her. Let's see, let's see how that goes. Come on now. Yeah, you'd think he'd want her to tell so that she's not into Ben anymore. I think he'd want that as a advantage for him. Maybe he's actually trying to be objective, but <laughs> but like like Joe said, all these secrets don't it's help anyone. Direct. Yeah. yeah yeah they end up they usually end up hurting people it's like oh i don't want to hurt you i don't want to hurt you and it's like those withholdings <laughs> that's what hurts the person not the truth it's the being lied to or being deceived in some way that's more hurtful than whatever that truth is that they were trying to hide so it's just again it's just making it get worse and worse all right so the next scene is back at ben's drama class so we see one of the students doing the hot objects lesson She's got a piece of paper in her hands, kind of describing what it is. And this girl's a little bit pretentious. She's like a former theater kid from high school talking about this playbill that her brother wrote on and he was so proud of her. And she starts like tearing up. And I love how Ben starts laughing at this moment because everyone else in class is like so into it, so deep and like also sort of crying. And he just starts laughing and laughing. So that's my hottest Ben moment because I just love how real he is he's not one of those pretentious kids so when he started laughing like Aww. oh this is what i would want my like hypothetical boyfriend at that moment to do with me is like laugh at these ridiculous laugh at other class. people's emotions <laughs> yeah. well obviously dr joe doesn't like that i didn't think that was cute at all no. <laughs> i was like wow no empathy this guy's a psychopath <laughs> I was disappointed. I was like, she was talking about about uh, her relationship with her brother. So it wasn't about like the theater, or, like being a, a star or something. It was about her brother. I was like, I didn't like it. I know. It was the way she was doing it. She was just so over the top. I thought the funny, I thought the funniest part was when the girl was saying, you know, oh, it's a white sheet with print on it. And the professor was like, don't, don't say print. <laughs> that same thing like <laughs> and it's just clueless like yeah. what's wrong with saying print like it's just such a strange <laughs> exercise so like i get that the premise seems dumb but yeah i don't like laughing when someone's upset was kind of strange <laughs> well, whatever. But yeah he's got a great smile so that's fine okay <laughs> yeah whatever <laughs> Anyway, it's his turn, so he has to get up there, and he's got a little bag, and he pulls out a sandwich, and everyone starts laughing immediately, which I thought was rude. Maybe they didn't know. Could have been important to him. <laughs> so very important sandwich. <laughs> I don't know. I think his body language and his facial expression kind of said it wasn't sure, serious. Sure, sure. Yeah, he <laughs> describes the bread and the meat, um, and the class is laughing even more. But he says it's important to him because he loves sandwiches. And I like how he takes a bite out of it and then everybody starts clapping. That would have been the hottest <laughs> moment for me. I think he looked his best then when he was making a mockery of the exercise. He was he was having fun with it. I liked his okay, But energy. not all drama classes but, have to be yeah. like serious drama. Like there's comedic parts of theater. So I don't know. But it wasn't, wasn't the part the of the assignment. It wasn't a yeah. stand up. <laughs> it wasn't a it stand up. Find routine. the it humor was... in everyday objects. <laughs> internal yeah. life yeah. Yeah, all right yeah Bye. he missed the mark he did well what does professor kenny think of his uh right exhibit? so professor kenny doesn't <laughs> accept this he wants ben to do the assignment over again i don't really remember what ben says after that i guess he agrees i think that's a later scene okay. yeah in this one he just kind of like leaves the stage and <laughs> professor's just kind of like not impressed <laughs> Then we move on back to Felicity, who is entering the dorm. She's walking to her room. She looks pretty disheveled. And Noel runs out of his room to catch up with her and asks her if she has any special requests for the party. And she says very emotionally, how about a copy of Inorganic Chemistry by William Garibay? 
<laughs> she said she used her whole Metro card and goes all over the city all day to find this book and it's out of stock everywhere. And yeah, again, maybe there are other students who also don't have the book if it's sold out everywhere and they just didn't admit it. But so for some reason, she just cannot find this textbook, mm -hmm. which seems pretty standard, like inorganic chem. It doesn't seem that rare of a book. So not sure why she can't find yeah. this book. Especially when it's written by the professor. Yeah. Just another example of her kind of like not seeing the forest for the trees and not seeking out maybe a classmate to be like, hey, can we study together? Can I borrow your book? Or like, and she comes up with another solution, whatever. But I think just making this kind of a chaotic situation when it doesn't need to be like this scrambling and going all over the city and, you know, using her whole Metro card, I think is just more of she, she should be in drama class. Jeez. <laughs> She's got it down. She doesn't need a class in drama. <laughs> no, I guess she could be the teacher. <laughs> and uh, Noel, of course, is there to reassure her and says, hey, if it helps, it's only college. So he's there to kind of bring her back down from, you know, a 10. <laughs> from, from the chaos. chaos. Yeah, yeah. I from think that was catastrophizing great. everything. Uh, so he's like, no, but really, yes. do you have any requests for the party? And she says, well, I like chocolate. She's like, but it's not really party food, is it? He's like, no, 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 chocolate. Got it. I'll take care of it. So he's going to get your on the chocolate and he's like also i know a guy and he can special order your textbook for you and just noel is the best like he fixes all the problems he's got a guy for everything and he's gonna get her chocolate in a textbook so i love noel very sweet yes <laughs> and then too like as he's solving her problems then you know he could tell that he's maybe being a little annoying too like oh i'll handle it i'll do everything for you and he's like okay fine like go freak out about your textbook and she just kind of smiles and goes back in her room so i thought that was cute <laughs> so back in inorganic chem garibay is finishing up the class and felicity goes up to him again Ooh. and he's annoyed with her mm -hmm. again <laughs> <laughs> like stop bothering this professor but she's like oh you know professor garibay i just want to let you know that i photocopied the pages that i need for the next few classes and my book is going to arrive by monday i just really wanted to make sure that we were okay which yeah this is awkward mm -hmm. and weird but i think garibay was a little meaner to her than he had to be and he was like are we okay yeah we're okay and you know what like you should just forget about the assignment and write an essay about how okay we are and then after that ask yourself whether or not you belong in my class i'm like well that's kind of like just because yeah. She said like, hey, I actually got the book and I wanted to make sure we're cool. That means that what she doesn't belong in inorganic chemistry. I was like, all right, dude, settle down. I got it. I got it. Because he said, he said, write an essay about how okay we are instead of doing the reading. And she's like, I don't understand. And I think the point of that was, why are you more worried about how we're doing than you are about actually reading it and being caught up? And yeah. that's what you need to be focused on, not our vibe. Yeah. That doesn't matter. That's not what college is about. Who says like, she hasn't done the reading? That's, She's got the pages now. He's assuming she doesn't care. Then she doesn't need to make an announcement yeah. to him. She doesn't need to go, you know, throw more stuff on top of it. It's just, it's like when Noel kept on apologizing to <laughs> her parents, like, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. It just escalates it. It doesn't, yeah. it doesn't diffuse. It escalates and it's just not, not a good move. Yeah. She's a smart girl. She should have known based on their first interaction that she didn't need to even talk to him anymore. <laughs> And her being so smart, she would catch up and there's just no, you know, prove yourself with your participation in class and your quizzes and tests and whatever else you've got to do. Like, that's how you demonstrate your ability to be in the class, not are we OK? So I think that's what he was trying to, like, get into her head. Like, it's not about us. It's about you doing yeah. the work. We could have said it in a nicer way. Well, she needed a reality <laughs> check. <laughs> Just tough love from the I doctor, man. <laughs> Every once in a while, yeah. Yeah. No, I am. I am kind of an asshole <laughs> now that I think about it. Never mind. I wouldn't be a good therapist for Felicity. Yeah. I think he also has obviously been teaching a very long time and probably mm -hmm. forgets how stressful it is as a freshman and he probably doesn't realize that she is idolizing him and has learned from him and has this crazy level of respect and adoration for him that yeah he probably doesn't kind of forgets that and is just used to students being annoying or trying to get ahead by schmoozing them and talking them up and I think it's yeah. an unfortunate unfortunate yes. meeting between them. <laughs> Yeah, it was a bad combo. But I think, too, also, 
Yeah, it's it's typical to be stressed at the beginning of, you know, your freshman year. It's the beginning of the year. But it's not typical for people to idolize their professors to that degree. That's not the norm across the board. That's not how every student approaches every class with every professor. So there's no way for him to have that in the back of his head and be sensitive to that. There's That's not really a reasonable expectation for him to keep that part in mind. But yeah, he probably was a little bit harsh, but she was also a little bit ridiculous. She's always over the top. Twice. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So that sounds exasperating. I would be like, oh my gosh, this are you girl serious? again. <laughs> yeah. Now what? Gotta love her. <laughs> All right. And n- yeah. And now we are party planning with Noel, Sensa, and we meet Yuri. <laughs> he's wearing a full on suit. He's chain smoking. He's got his, I don't know if it's a calculator or what, like it looks like a huge calculator that we used in calculus back in the day. It could, I don't know, it looked too big to be a beeper. He's typing all this stuff. He's <laughs> like, oh, you want the disco ball? I get your disco ball. And he's like listing out all these things. And Noel's just like, oh, I think that's over the top. Like we don't have a big enough budget for all this stuff. And Sensa just again is like we can get whatever we want like yuri will handle it and he's like okay for delivery do you have beeper and (laughs) noel's like do i have a beeper no not everyone has a beeper he's like okay i get you beeper (laughs) so it's just kind of funny like noel's put in a lot of these random awkward situations with the residents and all of their problems and this was another (laughs) funny one but one last thing one last request for yuri noel asks if he has access to chocolate which we obviously know is for felicity that was cute i liked it (laughs) Then back to sad Felicity. She's sitting in a dim hallway on a bench, probably outside of one of the classrooms. And Ben, of course, is there and sees her and sits down next to her and, hey, you know, asks her, how is chemistry? And she says that it's a crisis and that her teacher hates her. He's like, oh, it's probably not true. She's like, no, it's true. <laughs> he really hates me. And she asks again, another extreme. Come on. <laughs> Come I mean, I, down, would girl, think, I, would prob- I would probably think he hates me after that last interaction. Oh, yeah. But <laughs> I would think he was annoyed I'd, or I'd irritated or class. something. Yeah. But hate so yeah. dr- hate such a strong <laughs> word. <laughs> That sounds catastrophic. Crisis, hate, come on. Oh my gosh. I'm a very catastrophic person too, so I get it. (laughs) (laughs) So then Felicity also asks Ben, how's your drama class? And he says, that's also a disaster. He can't get out of it. And he's about to get an incomplete from the professor. And he explains the hot objects exercise to her and that he's kind of got to redo this and he doesn't know what to bring in. And Felicity thinks about it and says that she would probably bring in her necklace um, that she's wearing. And she says it was her grandmother's. (laughs) And Ben was like, well, that doesn't really help me, (laughs) which I thought was funny too. (laughs) And she goes on to say, but actually the most important thing to her isn't an object. It's just being in New York. And of course he starts just like staring at her because, you know, she provokes him Um, (laughs) and they lock eyes and he just kind of keeps looking at her very intensely, which Ben, what are you doing? I don't understand. He's got me just as confused as Felicity. I think he was appreciating her. Yeah. (laughs) Okay. He's drawn to her, but he doesn't quite know it yet. I think like all these little moments where he's like fascinated by her they're not necessarily romantic but well, yeah they're still getting to know each other and yeah. there's layers there they're yeah. both well, figuring that out he better wake he better wake the f up to this because it's exhausting <laughs> he's got her like up and down like a roller coaster yeah but he's finally like seeing her instead of this as this crazy woman who followed him here, he's like seeing these little bits mm-hmm. and pieces of her that are that are deep and kind of thought provoking to him. Mm-hmm. And we also never really find out any more about the essay that she sent him. Like he was just kind of like, yeah. I got it. See you around. So yeah, there's a lot of these little moments that confuse me. But he decides to ask her like, hey, are you still having that party? She says, yeah, it's still at Kelvin. He's like, well, I'll see you there, which of course is going to give her hope. So then before the party, Felicity is still chatting with Sally and recording and offers up one final fantasy to share with her. (laughs) Uh, Tells Sally that after she hears this, she has to erase it because it's just that embarrassing. And Felicity says that she can actually picture what it might be like to be with a man for the first time sexually. 
<laughs> and, and it's very clear that Ben's got her hopes up. She's like, okay, Ben's coming to this party. We're going to appreciate how we both look. And then we're going to talk all night. <laughs> well, he didn't get her hopes up. She did that all by herself. Well, he looked at her. <laughs> oh, God. I think this is, again, more of her getting carried away with the idea of things. I, I don't think that was on him. I mean, he was just being nice. He was trying to be friends. They're trying to be friends. Yeah, I'll see you there. It wasn't anything, like, official or formal or I don't know. I think he was just confirming that they're going to... My, my friends don't look at me that way. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, nobody looks like that, but <laughs> except for him. <laughs> Nobody looks like. But Scott that's Sweetman. her getting that's her getting herself worked up, not him. He's he can't help it. Like how she interprets those signals. Some of them, yeah, okay, he probably should reel it in a little bit, but she absolutely ran wild with that that little nugget. She just needs a little little itty bit and then it's gonna, you know, skyrocket from there. So we're back in drama class again. So Ben's got his second chance to redo his hot object assignment. He's kind of uncomfortable. He's talking to the professor saying he doesn't want to do it. So the professor says it's a pass fail class. So he has to do it or he's going to fail. So he gets back up on the little stage and this time he gets out his keys. And everyone starts laughing, which I was confused about because it wasn't like he was getting a sandwich out again. I don't know why they were laughing. I think it was just like, oh, he just like grabbed whatever was in his pocket again. Again. That's a random thing, yeah. But you're like, in sure. this case, it is rude because he is being yeah. serious. <laughs> yeah. Poor ben. So he describes the keys as being smooth. They have a hard, hard round loop connecting three shiny, sharp metal. And of course, the professor says, don't say metal. Don't say metal. <laughs> 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 so he says they're the keys to his apartment and he doesn't really want to explain more about why they're important to him but his professor keeps pushing him and so ben kind of gets a little deeper and he explains that he and his dad don't really get along but it's actually worse for his mom who is amazing but she gets really sad when ben and his dad fight so he talks about how they looked really happy in pictures before he was born and so the keys kind of mean that he's not home anymore which is good for him and he's not causing any problems at home his mom's not sad so he says it's better for everyone that he has these keys and then his professor kind of has like this satisfied look so it's kind of a deep moment for ben we get a little more background into his relationship with his parents and more about his reasons for coming all the way across the country to kind of get away from his dad loved it i like kenny was also satisfied <laughs> Yeah, it was just a really sweet moment. Yeah, there, he doesn't say much, but he says just enough for mm -hmm. us to understand like how bad his relationship is with his dad. And it's also just, I thought it was so sad when he said that his parents looked so happy in pictures, like before he mm -hmm. was born, like before he came around. So I feel like that maybe tells a little bit about his character feeling like not good enough. Mm -hmm. Like if you feel like you're the problem that is in yeah. your family or between your parents who maybe don't get along. And also what does a picture, like, of course you're going to smile in a picture. Everyone looks happy in pictures, but it doesn't really tell this whole story. So I feel like he probably doesn't realize that his, it's, you know, maybe always been bad with his dad and it's really not his fault, but you can tell he's like harboring mm -hmm. a lot of intense guilt. Yeah, and like shame. his inner child needs some, needs some love <laughs> for sure. Yeah. Poor Ben. Yeah, I really like the scene. And now it's party time. Well, City heads back to her dorm. You can see she went on a little shopping spree at Bloomingdale. She's got her big brown bag and she got a new fit for the party. Um, it's this cute little like strappy, slinky black dress. And you can tell she's like so excited for this party and dressing up for the event. <laughs> And of course, Megan busts into the room to rummage through her <laughs> closet per usual, but she actually says something this time instead of just one word. And she asks Felicity if she's going to the party with Julie and her Tiger Beat boyfriend, which... <laughs> kids tiger beat is a magazine and a magazine is like where they used to print articles on paper and you had to go and buy it <laughs> but yeah tiger beat that was what were some of those other ones it was like bob was good. Bob, bob bb bb i think the first bob Same. or bb or tiger beat i read was one of yours heather at your house <laughs> and then i went home and begged my mom to to get me one <laughs> Yeah, so you could <laughs> clip out pictures of Brad Renfro and yeah, yeah, Devin JTT. Sala. JTT. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so of course, the Tiger Beat boyfriend that Megan is referring to is Ben. And uh, Felicity's what? Like she's just like what? Julie doesn't have a boyfriend. And Megan says, "Is Ben invisible to you?" <laughs> Which Megan's just 
I love that. She also that line delivery was perfect. Tells it like it is. She's got the perfect comedic timing. Yeah. And Megan is like, "Look, they're always together." And Felicity's like, "Nope, you're wrong. They're just friends." <laughs> and Megan says, "Okay, well, tonight at the party, just watch them together. Look how like she leans into him and she laughs at his jokes. Like, trust me, they're couch dancing." And I just <laughs> <laughs> she's so goofy she's so funny I'm, I'm glad that we just get more and more of megan as the as the show goes on because she's hilarious um, so this you know probably a red flag for felicity going into the party but i think she's still kind of can she's still, she yeah she's it? still kind of convinced <laughs> like nope they're just friends so we get to the party um, it hasn't officially started yet but the disco lights are going the music's pumping on the sound system we see the snack table has lox and caviar for the russians <laughs> and then we also see that there is a whole pile of chocolate as well as a copy of inorganic chem by william garibay so noel fulfilled yeah and got uh got all the things that he promised for felicity sense is kind of like grooving in the middle of the room on her own and all of her mafia cousins <laughs> are like standing around smoking and drinking and noel comes out and he also dressed up in his little sport coat <laughs> like he did when he was meeting felicity's parents and felicity just looks great and she you know officially signs off on her tape to sally and takes it out of her little recorder and puts it on top of her dresser you could see her addressing everything and then noel knocks on the door and so she goes to answer and he starts to ask her something and then he's like oh wow like you you just look so amazing like he's swooning over her sweet and then she compliments him back and i just thought this was funny that it's kind of like the scenario in her head that she was talking to sally about mm -hmm. where he appreciate appreciates how she looks she appreciates how he looks they both appreciate how the other one looks but it's just not with the guy that she thought it would be with <laughs> yeah, yeah, it just isn't clicking. But he, um, yeah, came to talk to her and Sensa kind of interrupts in the middle and is looking for music requests. And Felicity tells her that she's got some stuff in the back of her room. So Sensa barges in and she's rummaging through all that stuff. And she grabs a couple of tapes and leaves. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> <laughs> so then it's still just Noel and Felicity. And he just came by in advance of the party to ask her if she wanted to dance. And she actually looks really excited and kind of giddy. And she's like, yeah, she would love that. So there might be some feelings developing here for Noel. It's very, very complicated, I think, going mm -hmm. like her brain is very complicated right now. Yeah. But this is a great example of somebody being direct, like, I want to dance with you versus, yeah, I'll see you there. You know, so I think this. This would have been if, if Ben said that and was like, hey, let's make sure we get a dance. That would have been a lot more. Oh, he's sending mixed messages. Like he just said he was going to see her there. Noel, on the other hand, directly is like, yeah, let's make sure we dance. So I think that's the difference between getting somebody's hopes up and being a little bit more forward and displaying some interest. I think she's just like riding on the Ben high, like knowing he was going to be there. So she's excited. And she's like, sure, I'll dance with Noel. But she's probably like, I just can't wait to see Ben. And now the party is hopping. Felicity comes out of her room. People are dancing and drinking and having fun. She heads over to the snack table refreshments and she sees the chocolate and textbook and she kind of giggles. Then we see that Yuri is actually the one DJing. He's got, you know, a cigarette hanging out of his mouth. He's tossing tapes around and into the little cassette player, which I guess is that what DJs used to do? <laughs> <I don't even laughs> he had a flair to him. I didn't think they used cassette tapes, but uh, that's how this party's being handled. So um, Noel comes up to her, hands her a beverage, and then we see in the, you know the elevator doors open on their floor, and Ben saunters in, which Felicity sees, and he goes straight up to Julie, which is all happening in slow mo because it's very dramatic. And he leans into Julie and whispers in her ear, and she's all smiley and giggly and laughing at his jokes, just like Megan said she does regularly. And they kind of walk off somewhere together. We don't, I don't know where they're going, maybe to dance or something, maybe to her room, who knows. But Felicity sees all of this and mm -hmm. Noel sees her seeing all of this. Mm -mm -mm. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's intense. Love square <laughs> happening here. And as Felicity's kind of processing everything, Sensa comes up and pulls Noel away because there's some other resident who's puking, which also seems weird to me because if a dorm is hosting this party, I didn't think they would have alcohol. I mean, I'm sure kids sneak it in, but like it was just very blatant. I don't think you would run to your RA about that, but I don't know. Yeah, I feel like whenever we drank alcohol in the dorms, we were like, made sure the door was closed. It was very hush hush. 
drinking a Smirnoff ice secretly in the dark, like would not be doing it in the main hallway of the dorm. Like also, how is this party in this little hallway of their dorm? Like how many people could they possibly fit in there? That's not why the kid got sick though. Oh, I thought she said she was throwing up or they were throwing up. He was sick. So Noel says later, I think it's the chocolate. Oh yeah. One of the chocolates. Yeah. Oh, the chocolate, right. Mm-hmm. That'll do it. <laughs> That I'll get you every time. I forgot. It's the Russian chocolate. <laughs> don't eat. Oh, that's funny. That's funny. Okay, well, Felicity, don't eat the chocolate. <laughs> I think he had a special allergy to it. I don't think it's all bad. <laughs> uh, so then Julie comes up to Felicity is like, hey, what's going on? But after Felicity just saw everything that went down between her and Ben, which wasn't much, but Megan's comments got in her head. And- it was enough. <laughs> Yeah, it was enough. Felicity Baby uh, has her eyes open now, and she's like, well, you tell me what's going on. Again, she's like, whenever I'm with you, I get this weird feeling like I can't trust you, and you get super weird whenever I talk about Ben, and I just feel like you're lying to me. Because she is. So again, Felicity, <laughs> because she is, yeah. And again, Felicity's super direct about it, but this time, Julie goes off the rails. She's clearly mad. I'm not sure why, but she's like, look, Ben asks me out. He asked me out for tonight, but I told him about the party because I knew that's what you wanted. Like you wanted him here. He calls me all the time. He asks me out all the time. And I always have to say no, which also like false. Felicity has told you do whatever you want. Mm -hmm. But then she's like, but I'm just so sick of protecting you. And then she storms off, like doesn't even give Felicity a chance to respond to that. Very immature. And at this, Mm -hmm. yeah, and no one was telling her, like Felicity never said, you can't date Ben. She has no reason to be pissed at Felicity, in my opinion, at this point. Yeah, that's her own mess. That's her own thing. I don't know. (laughs) And also we're like, what, a week or two into school? Like she's only just starting in organic chem. Mm -hmm. If I were Felicity, I would probably not think that this girl is my friend. Yeah. Like, I've only known you a couple of weeks and all this stuff has already gone down. I don't know if I would continue to be friends with her. Yes, this is a little too much history in such a short amount of time. (laughs) Too much, too much. So after that interaction with Julie, Felicity's pretty distraught. And of course, she wants to talk to Noel about it. But he's doing his RA thing, helping the kid who's sick from chocolate. (laughs) Um, So then she wanders off to the snack table. She kind of just, you know, looks lost or sad, doesn't know what to do at this party now. And there is another resident who is standing by the table and asks her what's wrong with her <laughs> and i cheered because it's elena and i love elena I and too. i'm so glad she's finally on the show and elena elena tyler is played by tangy miller and we love elena mm-hmm. and uh, talk about direct elena is yes direct. well of course you know i'm a fan <laughs> i love her and elena just met felicity and you know introduced herself to felicity and she's like oh i hate these things it's just like high school everyone's worried that they're making judgments about them and what happens but yuri changes the song and puts another cassette tape in but this time it's not a song it's felicity's tape to sally And we hear her narration talking about imagining her first time with a man sexually. And of course, the whole room just kind of stops. No more dancing. Everyone's just kind of looking around like, what is this strange audio that we're listening to? And Felicity is frantic. It's a Russian import. (laughs) (laughs) It's the the latest house music from from Russia. (laughs) Felicity's frantic. She's like can someone please turn that off? Like she keeps repeating that and yelling it, but apparently Yuri doesn't care, doesn't hear, which also this kind of outs awful. everyone in the dorm. Yes. That is her talking. So embarrassing. Yeah. That's like going up to the professor. I mean, like, you didn't read the book. Hey everybody, this is my tape. Stop Look at me. <laughs> and so she's, she's making her. <laughs> Let me make my yeah. voice loud enough so that you can recognize that it's my voice on the tape too. <laughs> Come on. Oh boy, that was, oh, ouch. As she's screaming at Yuri, she's trying to weave her way and make her way up to the cassette boombox, whatever you want to call it. And she reaches Yuri and she gets there, you know, she hits the stop and eject button, but the damage is done. Everyone now knows it's her because she's made a scene. (laughs) And enough of it has played that we, now everyone has heard her talking about imagining her first time. So everyone knows she's a virgin and that she says embarrassing ass stuff like this to people on tape recording. (laughs) 
Yeah. Wow. And Ooh, how do you yeah, come back from and that? And then we also <laughs> just catch a visual of Julie seeing and hearing this all happening from afar. And she looks, you know, sad for her sort of friend. But Felicity retreats to her room where she finds two randoms are just like hooking up in her bed and she tells them to get the heck out of her room. So she's sitting in the dark on her bed, very sad and embarrassed, of course. And Julie comes in and... Oh, wait, hold on. You skipped the best part. First of all, they weren't they weren't randos. Just they were from say. drama class. Yeah. And when she sat down on the bed, she sat down on a coat. And the guy came back. He's like, oh, I forgot my coat. Yeah. And then she throws it at him. Like, you know, it's like one of those sitcom, you, you know, throws it in his face. And you can't see the person, the person's <laughs> off screen throwing it. But I saw her when I was rewatching this multiple times. She did yeah. actually sit on it. So she had to get up and throw it at him to, to get, you know, resolve that whole little That's transaction. That's the best part. <laughs> but yeah, they were from drama class. Ben's it was the playgirl. The yeah. pretentious girl. The yeah. Yep. Yep. And then the Meisner guy. Yep. Oh, it was That's the Meisner the guy too. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Yes. I knew they were yeah. drama kids, but I didn't think it was super relevant. Featured drama to kids. The drama. <laughs> but fine. No, but I, I like that you appreciate the the, the comedy. <laughs> yeah. The details. Yeah, I liked it. Well, now Julie comes in and tries <laughs> to sort of make amends, I guess. But it's like, read the room, not the right time, Julie. She's like, oh, what I said before came out all wrong. But Felicity's just yeah. wants to be left alone at this point. And Julie at least listens to her and leaves. Yeah, yeah. respectfully leaves. Well, so Julie's really good at leaving, so. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> just walking away. <laughs> so she did it. She, she nailed it. She loves to bounce. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> She's so good at that. You can count on her for that. But yeah, that was probably the cringiest moment so far in this show. I mean, the essay, mm. sending the yeah. essay. I can't imagine it get... was pretty bad, yeah. but he took it okay. Yeah. That's a close second. Yeah. So then the next, I think it's the next day. It looks like there's light coming through her bedroom window. No, it's, it's night. that night. The, in her bedroom, though, it, it looks stupid. Yes, yeah. because of what happens later. You know. You know what happens later. So it's at yeah. night still. The same night. It but was there's like light know. coming in through her bedroom window. That's the show's lighting that we appreciate all the time. That's just... <laughs> it looked like, that's it just, looks like city daylight, light. not like yeah. moody, That's warm, cinema. That's cinema. glow of the lamps. <laughs> all right. So it's... Okay, right. well, keep going. You'll see. You'll see why we know it's the nighttime still. <laughs> well, that's the same... That all happens on the same night? Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Right, so it's yeah. the same night. Maybe the party started at like four. <laughs> and so it's still light out after. <laughs> Could like, be. Maybe it's an early dorm party. <laughs> so anyway, she, Felicity's in her feelings and she ventures out to the grocery store to get some Ben and Jerry's and uh, just uh, buy a single spoon, which I thought was a great detail. Like not just buying the ice cream, but like I'm by myself yeah. and I don't have any silverware. I'm going to buy this spoon. Like it was just. Well, she wouldn't. She wouldn't have necessarily packed that for I know. college. So I love it that. It was just such, such a great detail for yeah. them to have her buy that. And who does she run into at the checkout? Not Ben Arnoll, which is surprising for the show, but it's actually William Garibay who's at checkout. And Felicity's got to be extra. And she's already, again, at a low point. She's like, what What do I have to lose here, right? So she goes up to Garibay and asks him what she did to make him hate her. Like, was it the books? Or did you look something up in my record that, and you saw something that you didn't like? And Garibay is annoyed per usual. He's like, look, if you want to be a teacher's pet, like, there's this other professor who likes that. Like, you can go sign up for another class. And Felicity explains, like, no. I don't need to be the teacher's pet. And so Garibay says, well, then everything's mm -hmm. fine. We're fine. We're okay. He's like, the good thing is you don't need to be okay with me to learn something in my class. He's like, don't worry about me. Just worry about yourself. Great words of advice. Yeah. <laughs> we finally got some resolution with the professor and I don't know. Do we take anything away from that conversation? Like, don't worry about him, worry about yourself. I was trying to think if it applied to anything else going on in the episode, but. No, I think it was probably the nicer way that you all were looking for him to communicate that to her than he did earlier of like write an essay about how okay we are. This was just a nicer way of him reiterating that, I think. It takes a while for her to get things to sink in. You know, like, why would you be like, why do you hate me? Like, that's so dramatic. I would never go up to a professor and be like, why do you hate me? After having two interactions with them that were not seriously intense, like it's not like he gave her failing grades or something, or we didn't see any scenes with him calling on her in class, knowing that she didn't read the book or something. You know, it's like, girl, scale it back just a little bit, just a little bit. 
Yeah, I think it just goes under the bigger theme of growing up and becoming an adult and mm. learning how to have these adult interactions, you know, she's not used to. So, yeah, yeah, just, yeah, some approaching some things with maturity, just focusing on your own stuff. Yeah, because she does build things up outside of her. She idolizes people and concepts and ideas and just runs with them. So I think that is a good way to come back down to earth with the rest of us and just focus on yourself. And not your first college party and your first class of becoming a doctor and, you know, all the other things. Just tone it down, girl. But I'm glad that he finally said it in the way that he probably should have said it from the beginning. So I don't I don't Fine. hate Garibay anymore. I'm like, <laughs> all right, he maybe realized, OK, I was overreacting a bit based because now she thinks I hate her. But And Melissa, just real quick, Melissa, do you recognize him? He was Rose's boyfriend on the Golden Girls. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, that's him. Did he have glasses then that too? Uh, I think so, maybe. Okay, I'll we'll have to go back and watch that now. Okay. <laughs> I just can't see him and not think of the Golden Girls whenever I see him. I, I like linking all of these actors to other things that they've been in, so I'm going to have to rewatch Golden Girls now. <laughs> It was a whole thing. They were they had a full on relationship. It wasn't just a couple dates. Oh. So it was like he was he was her homeboy. So after her interaction with Garibay, Felicity heads back to her room and Noel comes out of his room to chat with her and says that he heard about the tape thing, but Felicity doesn't want to talk about it, of course. And she thanks him for the chocolate and basically Noel just says, like, hey, let's take a rain check on the dance. So that was nice of him to respect her space and mm -hmm. Hopefully they get their little dance someday. He also has a tendency to not drop things, so I'm glad that he let it let it lie for now and just said a nice thing and let it let it move on. Didn't try and solve it for her. <laughs> yeah, yeah. How do you do that? There's that's there's no way. So then she, you know, obviously goes to sleep in her room and she clearly just pounded that pint of ice cream down, <laughs> fell asleep in bed, but the container, the carton is like on the yeah. top of her blanket. She's already <laughs> sleeping and she gets a knock on her door and it's Ben. And he makes a little bit of small talk about the party and she asks him if he heard her tape. And he very graciously was like, no, not, <laughs> not really. No, not really. <laughs> I love that. I love it. <laughs> Only kind of, not really. <laughs> but Felicity's like, that yeah, was just yeah, so you sweet. Did. Yeah. She knows he did. He's like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then she asks him how his acting thing ended up being. And he actually thanks her because she helped him saying that, you know, just being in New York was actually her, you know, the thing that meant the most to her. And then he has a favor to ask. He says because of the hot objects exercise, he left his keys in this classroom and his roommates aren't home. So can he stay in her room? And Felicity's a little <laughs> shocked and surprised, as we all are. And she's like, oh, yeah, well, Felicity or uh, Megan's never here. So you can just sleep in her bed. And so he goes and convenient goes to <laughs> goes to sleep in Megan's bed. And I don't understand why he doesn't just sleep in Julie's room, who he's been flirting with all night. I think that's a little too forward. But you could do it with this that's other girl who's got feelings with for you. I think maybe he should have asked Noel. <laughs> and there's like couches in the lobby area. Like you can sleep yeah, out there. Yeah. Man. I think there is an alternative to that, but I, I can understand why he didn't necessarily try to go to Julie's room because that would be like taking it too far or something. Yeah. Like not that they would the do floor. anything, but just yeah. like it's I know, I know. Well, she can barely have a conversation with him in the hallway. How's he going to get all the way in her room and spend the night? You know, there's <laughs> also that. Who knows? Maybe they he... They were already hanging out at the party, though. They were, like, flirting and well, they went off together. Yeah, she... Well, she goes up and down. And this was one of the, you know, True. hot and cold. This was one of the cold moments, probably, that True. he couldn't get all the way in the door. <laughs> I could see that. I figured I'd have to defend Ben at this point. <laughs> but let me say a little bit. <laughs> Please I think do. she was probably just skittish. Yeah, she probably was just like scurried away and slammed the door in his face for all we know. Okay, so Ben just came off of this like super emotional part of his drama class where he had to like reveal part of himself with his dad and his mm -hmm. relationship with his family. Um, and he kind of bonded with Felicity a little bit when they were both complaining about their classes. And we could tell he was like intrigued by her. I think it just kind of shows that their friendship is really blossoming. Like they feel a lot more comfortable around each other. Like, you know, they kind of have this have this bond and this trust. So Yeah, and they know each other yes. from high school, right? Just kidding. <laughs> know each other. 
<laughs> he knew that she liked him, whatever. But still, I think like in his mind, they're just like forming this close friendship. Yeah. And it doesn't really seem like Ben has a lot of like close friends at this point. Like he, he kind of mentioned his roommates or whatever. And yeah, he likes hanging out with them. But Felicity is kind of like a deeper relationship than that. So I think like, yeah, if you didn't have anywhere to go, why not? She's a reliable this, friend to have. This reliable friend, yeah. Yeah. And he doesn't say, can I like sleep in your bed? He's like, I'll just sleep on the floor. Blah, yeah, blah, blah, I think it was very clear he wasn't interested in any like yes. mixed messages type of things. I think he really does. Yeah. yeah, think of her as a friend. I think you're right that that friendship is getting genuinely established. Mm -hmm. So do both of you truly think... <laughs> no, no, I, I really want to understand. I know. <laughs> so do both of you truly think that Ben thinks that Felicity doesn't have feelings for him anymore, that they are just friends. I don't know that he is thinking that deeply about it. I think he yeah. thinks that they're just friends. So that's right. where that okay. train of thought stops. Okay. So I, I think it's just, yeah, kind of out of his mind now, like out of like, that's not even an option because he is fully invested in like, yeah, we're just friends. And he just thinks so he she's probably, quirky and sensitive. Not obsessed with him and, anymore. Yeah. That's okay. <laughs> okay. Then that's fair. Agreed. I feel like it's got to be obvious. How does he not know? And then all of this stuff to me is. Well, because she keeps on hiding just, things and keeps yeah. on smiling and saying like, yeah, that's great. That's so great for you. You go do this. You go date each other or whatever. Like she's giving that vibes like, oh, OK, yeah, that's fine. So it's not like she's acting wrecked and dramatic with him. Well, she did that one time, but since then, <laughs> she just does that with every. You know, she just does that with their professors just, now. You know, last last episode. <laughs> Besides that, though, it's like that's that was. You know why are you bring up old shit? She's fine now. <laughs> old <Old-chid>. shit. <laughs> totally fine. Just talking about her fantasies to Sally. So then this is. Well, she didn't say his name. No. No. <laughs> When not the fortunately with them sexually, but how it would go seeing Ben at the party from across the room and we would appreciate how he looks and all that. Yeah. So. Yeah. But that's not the part that played. So for all he knows, right. he, she's just like running her mouth to Sally again. Yeah. And so we finally get the tape back from Sally as we survey the damage from the party, all of the, you know, people passed out and the red solo cups everywhere. And Sally tells Felicity that a guy asked her out, but she said no. And as Sally is narrating, we see Felicity wakes up. It's the morning and she looks over and sees Ben asleep in Megan's bed. And Sally tells Felicity that she said no because she's not ready to move past John, who was her fiance who passed away. And she says that expectations can inspire you, but they can let you down. Mm -hmm. And we see Felicity get up from bed from her bed and she goes over to Megan's bed and kneels down <laughs> next to the bed and watch Ugh. watches Ben sleep like a creep. <laughs> Oh, so strange. She wasn't like a little far away. She was like right, right. next she to him. She kneeled down right next to him. Like, as, like, oh, do you have a temperature? Let me feel your forehead. Like that close. <laughs> and so as Sally is explaining that she's just not ready to be let down yet, that she still has hope one day, even pretty soon, that she'll take a chance again in the horrible face of expectation and maybe it'll be worth it. And with that, the scene ends with Felicity staring longingly at Ben sleeping. Wow. <laughs> so there's definitely parallels there between what Sally was saying and Felicity's feelings for Ben. We maybe get the impression that Felicity's also not ready to let go of her feelings for Ben yet, that maybe she still has hope. And yeah, you you expectations might let you down, but she maybe still thinks that it'll be worth it someday. So it was kind of a somber end to the episode. I mean, a little bit hopeful, but yeah. we also know that Ben's not really into Felicity right now so I felt like it was a little bit sad because she also had this huge embarrassment the night before and things are up in the air with Julie and she didn't get to dance with Noel I don't know things seem a little yeah. up in the air at the moment not sad but I'm glad it did address the, the expectations again just there's so much build up and when you build things up that big you're gonna be crushed if it's not exactly that way and that's just what happened to her throughout the episode so I'm glad that that got addressed by Sally and it kind of goes back to that theme of growing up and becoming an adult and have all these fantasies and expectations of what life will be like. And she definitely got a dose of reality this episode. Multiple reality checks. Gosh, <laughs> she went through it. 
And Ben's kind of the ultimate fantasy, right? Like the high school jock and she was the nerd and she's still kind of hanging on to that part, maybe part of her childhood too. So it's very interesting. Mm -hmm. And our hay counter this week, we really ramped up. We had 16 hays. It was across the board. Felicity, Ben, wow. Julie, maybe even Sensa. There were tons of hays all over the place. <laughs> <laughs> it would have been cool if Yuri had one. <laughs> I tried to think if Elena said, hey, like, hey, what's wrong with you? I can't remember. But um, I feel like she just went in straight in and there was no. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. What's wrong with you? <laughs> oh, man. I am so excited for next week. These are some of my favorite episodes here in this early season one. Like Hot Objects was such yeah. a classic with the tape <laughs> at the party. Next week, there's some really epic stuff that happens. Mm -hmm. We're getting more characters. I'm loving digging into these again with you all. Yeah. I'm looking for it even more to the one after that, too. Like, this is a nice set right here. Three, four, and five are, are good doozies. And the especially the friendship that's developing between Felicity and Ben. Like you said, two episodes from now, I feel like more stuff happens that mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. plays up the dynamic. Here. We're going there. It's getting yep. deeper. It's getting so yep. deep. Love it. <laughs> Can't wait. Any other last thoughts on hot objects? If you had to bring in a hot object to drama class. Oh, oh my gosh. What would you bring in? <laughs> that's tough. Yeah, that's a good one. I might bring in um, I might bring in my um my daughter's little hospital bracelet from when she was born. <laughs> oh my god, that's deep, deep. I don't have anything. I was nope. like, I'm obsessed with my cell phone. I'd pull a Ben. <laughs> don't say bracelet. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's a smooth chin white. There we go. <laughs> With don't print, print, don't say print. <laughs> <sighs> yeah, I don't even, I don't know either. I didn't uh, plan that question. <laughs> it was a good one. It is. I should have thought about it before the episode. <laughs> <laughs> I think I did even think about it because I was like, hmm, I wonder what I would bring when I was watching it. And um, that fell right out of my head. I feel like so, so much of the stuff that is meaningful to it, like Felicity said, it might not even mm -hmm. be an object. You're like, I kind of started my own business in the past couple of years and I was gonna say like oh I'd bring in my business card but I don't even have a business card like everything's virtual <laughs> these days so like I don't have even like a mm. physical thing a lot of stuff is virtual but maybe next week we can share our hot objects I'd have to think about it yeah and I think it's the, the opposite for me she went from California to New York and I went from the Midwest to California so being here is the most important thing to me so I really that did resonate with me when she said that like that move was everything it meant everything to me so i can i can definitely relate to that amazing well everyone we will see you again next week for episode four thanks so much again for listening and we will chat later bye see you next week bye felicity was here is produced written and edited by heather melissa and dr joe you can find us on Instagram and TikTok at Felicity Was Here Pod. If you're enjoying the pod, please leave us a review and help us spread the word. We appreciate you and would love to hear from Felicity super fans like us. So send us your feedback, ask us your burning questions, or just say hey at Felicity Was Here Pod at gmail.com. We may even read your note in a future episode. Talk to you all next week. <laughs>